Okay, hello everyone and welcome to this uh, webinar brought to you by City Index. Today we're going to be talking about candlestick analysis or the subtitle, The Story of the Market, and I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, this is part of our uh, regular Wednesday webinar series uh, that uh, takes place at 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, in the UK. And uh, we've been talking about a lot of different subjects in, in the past uh, the past several weeks, and we're going to continue uh, talking about uh, you know more subjects going forward, all having to do with uh, trading uh, in the financial markets. Now, uh, starting from today's webinar, we're going to be getting into the more specifics in terms of the uh, you know the actual techniques and strategies uh, that you could use uh, in your trading. And today is uh, we're going to start it off with the uh, candlesticks. So uh, let's get started real quick, um, just to uh, just to address this question here, Stefan. I, I I believe you saw my uh, uh, this slide up here uh, talking about CMT and what does the CMT stand for? It simply stands for Chartered Market Technician. So I'm going to get to that uh, in a second. Uh, let's move forward real quick. Before we get started, uh, as always, just a quick disclaimer. Financial trading carries a high level of risk to your capital with the possibility of losing more than your initial investment and may not be suitable for all investors. Ensure that you fully understand the risks involved and seek investment advice if necessary. Okay, uh, this is quickly about me. Again, my name is James Chen. Uh, I don't think I mentioned that. Uh, I'm the Chief Technical Strategist at City Index Group, uh, which means basically what I do is I trade, I analyze, and I educate. Uh, and also, just to address your question, there's a bunch about uh, me here that I'm not going to go through, but just to address your question, Stefan, uh, Chartered Market Technician is uh, the CMT you see here, is basically uh, just a designation uh, given by the Market Technicians Association, or MTA, based here uh, in the New York, uh, New York City area, but uh, it, it's actually global, and we've got, uh, we've got different um, chapters around the world, and it basically... Uh, you know, it's a designation for technical analysts. And what is technical analysis? Basically, it's uh, looking at uh, financial charts and uh, analyzing them uh, for trading purposes. So that's that's what the uh, the CMT or the Chartered Market Technician is. Uh, if you have any questions about that, you can certainly email me. Uh, basically, it is uh, three tests that's given over the period. Uh, over the uh, duration of, uh, I believe it's two years. I took this a long time ago, but uh, two years, and uh, you know, it tests your knowledge and your uh, your application of technical analysis. Okay. So with that being said, if you have any questions during the course of this uh, webinar, please feel free to type them into the questions window, as some people have done already, and uh, I'd be more than happy to get to them. Uh, yes, uh, Mian, uh, this will be available to watch after. Uh, as always, uh, these webinars are recorded, and they will be posted on our website at cityindex.co.uk, uh, where you could uh, take a look at the recording. It's probably going to be posted uh, the next day by tomorrow, uh, so you could uh, access that. And uh, all of our webinars actually are posted up there at cityindex.co.uk, so feel free to uh, take a look at those at your leisure. Okay, so let's uh, let's move forward real quick. Um, uh, just a quick uh, overview of the webinars that we've done in the past and that we we are continuing to do. And what I mentioned as the Wednesday webinars, and this is going to be on an ongoing basis. Although uh, from now on, uh, the next uh, the, the webinars will be on uh, a, you know uh, every two weeks as opposed to every week. So uh, next week we'll not have a webinar. But uh, two weeks after, we're going to be talking about Fibonacci trading. So we've uh, basically covered a lot of ground here in the last several weeks. Uh, we've been talking about uh, an introduction to trading, uh, indicators, chart patterns, multiple time frames, uh, trade entries, trade exits, emotions and trading psychology. Uh, last week, we talked about trading plan discipline. And of course, this week, we're talking about candlestick analysis. And then two weeks from now, we're going to be talking about Fibonacci trading. And then a further two weeks, uh, we're going to be talking about other uh, aspects of trading, including the all-important support and resistance, and then also the all-important trend, uh, and then we're going to be talking about counter trend and range trading, and it's going to go for, uh, further from there. Uh, we're going to uh, put some more topics up here uh, as we move along uh, in the in the coming weeks. Now, uh, also uh, in terms of the UK elections that are coming up on May seventh, 
uh, we're going to be having a, a webinar, sort of a roundtable with all of our analysts, uh, talking about the different aspects uh, and the different uh, trading opportunities presented or potentially presented by uh, the UK elections coming up on May 7th, uh, which is a big thing, and it could be very market moving in terms of uh, the, uh, sterling as well as uh, the indices, uh, the FTSE. Uh, and other uh, other trading instruments. So we're going to be taking a look at those, looking for potential opportunities. Uh, so we're going to be running a webinar. You could take a look and you could register right on our website. Uh, again, at cityindex.co.uk. Okay, so let's move forward real quick. Um, now, before we get to the actual candlesticks, uh, you, you know, a lot of you have probably seen this before. I uh, my you know my talking about confluence. Uh, so I'm not going to go over uh, you know much here. I'm just going to simply say that uh, when I talk about candlesticks and providing a, a context or story uh, in terms of the market, uh, basically what it is, it's part of it's part of confluence. It's part of uh, you know confirmation agreement among your different tools. Candlesticks are but one tool uh, that you could use uh, in your uh, in your arsenal. So basically, we're looking at a lot of different things. We're looking at uh, candlesticks. We're looking at the trend. Uh, you know, very importantly, we're looking at the trend. We're looking at the uh, support and uh, you know key support and resistance levels. We're looking at uh, speed and volatility, multiple time frames, uh, pullbacks. Um, moving averages, chart patterns, uh, etc., and candlesticks are an important aspect of that confluence. So again, confluence is agreement amongst your different, uh, you know, technical tools, among your dif different uh, uh, time frames, etc. So, uh, you know, basically we're using uh, the candlesticks as a, a, an adjunct tool to help us in our trading and to help us as we always are looking for high probability trading opportunities okay it's always what we're looking for we're not looking for low probability trading opportunities we're looking for high probability trading opportunities and what does that mean that means that your tools are helping you to uh, you know they're agreeing with each other and they're helping you to uh, you know pinpoint opportunities to enter into trades to exit uh, out of trades as well as to manage your, your trades while they're going on now uh, in terms of uh, in terms of that uh, you know, just an example here. Uh, when we see a, a certain candlestick pattern, let's say a, a hammer candle, okay? In and of itself, if a hammer candle appears, it's not necessarily to say that uh, there's automatically a trading opportunity just because a hammer candle appears. However, if you put this in conjunction with your other tools, for example, if that hammer candle uh, uh, occurs right after a down move, and it occurs right at a uh, support uh, at a, a strong support level, then that is a higher probability trade. Okay, so that's the trade I'm going to be paying attention to, and you could bet that I'm going to be paying attention, and a lot of traders will be paying attention to uh, hammer candles near support levels. Okay, so uh, in isolation, many of these tools are not as strong as you know as you would like them to be a lot of people are looking for the holy grail they're thinking okay if i could just use these uh, if if i just look at candlesticks will that make me profitable and it could but um but probably not uh, the best thing to do, as I always say, is to combine your candlesticks with the other aspects of your trading, including support and resistance, including moving averages, including Fibonacci levels, which we're going to talk about in two weeks, including your fundamental uh, perspective, uh, as well as uh, different time frames, uh, the trend, etc. All of that you need to be looking at uh, in order to come up with the highest probability of trading uh, opportunities that will will give you the best probability of actually making money and being consistently profitable, which is what we're all looking for. Okay, so uh, that is confluence uh, in a nutshell, and uh, again, candlesticks are a part of that. Okay, let me see if any questions here. Um, okay, Sonia, great question. We're in the middle of April. What is your view on markets till now? It is holding up very well. Uh, you know, what we do is we give a market outlook um, every week. And uh, just two days ago on Monday, I gave my market outlook for, uh, you know, for the upcoming uh, trading days and weeks. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're not going to have a lot of time to do that he uh, here. But uh, rest assured uh, that we have, uh, you know, we have our website, uh, as you can take a look here. 
if you could see this. This is uh, our website where we uh, provide our market outlook. Uh, you know, I'm doing uh, the technicals here down over here. We have all of these uh, analysts here that uh, we, we provide, uh, you know, uh, fundamental analysis, market news, forex news, financial news, technical analysis, uh, you know, education, et cetera. And we have monthly predictions, as you can see right here. Uh, again, that general election, um, that general election webinar and the articles that we have are all up here, so you can take a look at that. Uh, so all, all of our outlook is here, um, and again, we do uh, run webinars every week uh, regarding that with a different analyst every week, and you know, it just so happened two days ago was my, tur my turn. And if you wanted to take a look at that, you could go to our website again here at cityindex.co.uk, and you'll be able to find uh, the recording there. Okay, great. So let's get started uh, real quick here, uh, talking about moving on from confluence. Let's talk about candlestick structure. I know a lot of people, uh, you know, when you when you see the next slide, you're probably going to be yawning, okay, uh, because uh, you, you've seen this probably too many times. But I'm just going to quickly go over this for those of you who are new to uh, to trading, new to technical analysis, new to looking at charts, uh, just to give you a, a you know a structure here, and then we're going to move uh, you're, we're going to move into the um, into the actual patterns. Okay, so uh, basic chart structure. Uh, again, just a quick overview for those of you who are new to charts and technical analysis, okay? Um, okay, so here is a bar, okay? That is uh, what many people are used to looking at before candlesticks became all the all the rage, you know? A lot of people uh, got into candlesticks uh, only in, uh, you know, recent decades and, and years. But prior to that, you know, most people were using bars uh, or line charts. Line charts are simply those charts that uh, just show the close uh, of each day or the close of each period and, and you know, pro provide a line for you. Okay, uh, let me just show you that real quick. Um, let's say you wanted a line chart. Uh, you could simply do that by, uh, let me just take a look here. Okay, line chart. Okay, this happens to be U.S. oil. This is a line chart, okay, uh, and it simply gives you the closing period. So those of you who are, you know, a, a lot of people used to use line charts, but now nowadays more people, uh, you know, have uh, uh, migrated over to candlesticks and, you know, to a certain extent bars as well. But candlesticks are, are pretty much the newest way of looking at, at, uh, at price action. And, you know, a, li a line chart is good because it gives you the, uh, general, uh, you know, the, the closing prices for each uh, day. This happens to be a daily chart of U.S. oil, but um, it gives you the uh, the closing prices, and then it gives you us, you know, the, the direction, the trend. It's very easy to look at trend here, okay? But um, uh, you know, most people are used to looking at the bar chart, which is simply this. Let me uh, blow it up a little bit more, okay? The bar chart is simply, uh, you know, you have an open and then you have a close. Let me go back to the slides here. Uh, here you have uh, the bar chart has the open on the left-hand side, left-hand arm, a close on the right-hand arm, and then in between you have the high and low, low and high. You don't know which one happened first. If you're looking at a chart uh, and you see this, this type of bar, you don't know which happened first, just like with the candlesticks. You don't know if the uh, high happened first or the low happened first or what happened uh, in between, but you know where the bar opened, where it closed, and then uh, where the high and where the low were during the, the course of that period, okay? Now, uh, so it's very simple to see that. Uh, if it opened higher than it, uh, than it closed, then you would simply see the left-hand side up on top and then the right-hand side, uh, you know, lower than that. Now, the candlestick is very, very, uh, very similar in terms of the information it provides you. It also provides you with the open, the high, the low, and the close of that period, okay? So, um, but it's, it, it uh, represents it in a different manner. manner. So if we have here, we have the high and the low. So we could just uh, put that aside. We know uh, the, the, uh, the high of the period, the low of the period. Now, what's the difference between a candlestick and a bar? It's simply this uh, middle part, which is called the body, okay, the body of the candle. And what is the body? It depends on the color. So uh, if, we have the real, uh, if we have the body being white or green, usually on most charting platforms, uh, I usually have mine, uh, you know, green green or red. But uh, if the body is white or green, that means the currency, I'm sorry, not the currency, the, uh, the instrument, whatever instrument, uh, instrument it is, whether it's a currency or an index or uh, a stock or what have you, 
uh, if it's green or, or, or white, that means that it closed higher than it opened, and therefore it's called a bullish candle. Okay. Now, by the same token, the opposite is, uh, is true, where if it's either black or red, the, this body right here, that means it closed lower than it opened, and we call it a bearish candle. So, uh, you know, very, very similar in terms of the information it gives you. It gives, uh, the candlestick gives you the exact same information as a bar, only in a more visual manner. And that's why I prefer to using the candlestick. So, uh, although I get the same information by looking at this thing right here, as I do by looking at this thing, as you can see here, it is much more visual. So uh, here I'm looking at, uh, I could see, you know, these green bars, it's, v it's very clear to me that th this is a, a very, uh, you know, bullish uh, area right here that we're looking at right here, okay? Uh, so by the same token, if, it's, uh, if, if there are a lot of red, big red candles, I'm looking at very uh, bearish price action, and uh, the market is looking bearish. So uh, again, same exact information as with the bars, but represented in an easier, more visually appealing, more visually useful manner than uh, the bars, at least from my perspective. And that's why I use um, candlesticks rather than bars. But feel free to use uh, you know, anything you want. Now, let's get into the uh, chart patterns. Uh, you could use bars to, uh, to look at uh, so-called candlestick patterns, but it's much, much easier looking at the, candles, uh, you know, the actual candlesticks. So, uh, you know, all of you have candlesticks available to you, so let's talk about the patterns that are there. Okay, so ca candlestick patterns. Uh, why do I call it the story of the markets told by the candles, okay? Uh, what I mean by that is, well, first of all, just a, a, a very short history, you know, back, uh, I don't know how many years ago, but uh, there's a guy named um, Steve Nissen, okay, who I know, uh, you know, uh, relatively well. Uh, we've done uh, several... Um, uh, seminars together uh, here in the U.S. Uh, and uh, you know, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, you know candlesticks and how it came to be, basically there uh, it came from Japan, and uh, they've been using candlesticks there for uh, for you know a long time, for many uh, you know centuries, I guess. And then uh, what happened was uh, Steve Nissen went uh, went to Japan, and he learned about the candles, and then he he translated a bunch of texts. Uh, brought them over to the West, and now uh, candlesticks are everywhere. Uh, you look at any platform, any charting platform, any uh, trading platform, they're all going to have candlesticks, and, and oftentimes those candlesticks will be the default of your platform, uh, which is uh, very often the case. Now, um, now what are so so he he comes and he brings this uh, to uh, to the West, and he writes these books, and uh, you know some of those books are very highly recommended. Uh, including the big one, um, I forget what it was called, I think it's just uh, Japanese Candlesticks, but basically what it does, it provides you with, uh, you know, an exhaustive um, text on, uh, you know, all the different candlestick patterns, and all of these candlestick patterns have many different, uh, you know, very imaginative names. Now, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, I'm not saying that these are, you know, you shouldn't try to memorize all these names. I had to actually do that, uh, but... But uh, in terms of, uh, you know, actually applying them to your trading, it's not necessary, okay? It's all about, it's not about the names, it's all about the story behind the, the candlestick patterns. And what do I mean by that? Basically what I mean is that uh, each candlestick pattern gives you a story of what's going on in the market, okay? Regardless, regardless of whether it's called, a, a, you know, tweezer tops or, or morning star, or hammer candle, or shooting star, or doji, or, or whatever you want to call them. They're giving you a story, and that's what's most important, not the names themselves, okay? So what, are, what, what, is, uh, what kind of story are candlesticks, pa candlestick patterns usually trying to uh, give you? First of all, uh, you know, what's very important are what, what are called wicks or shadows, okay? So let me go back here. Uh, these little things on top, besides the, the body here, these little things on top and bottom are called wicks or shadows, okay? You could call them whatever you want to call them. I don't care what you call them. What they mean are they, they're basically, uh, you know, how separated from the, from the open and close that the, the high and low are, okay? 
So the primary principles here are the wicks and the shadows, which you'll see in a moment. I'm going to show you charts as well. Um, the wicks and the shadows, indecision in the market, which are represented by uh, such candlesticks as uh, doji or what have you. I'm going to show, you, show that to you in a second as well. And uh, these candlesticks also tell the story of market turns, okay? So very, very important. If you are able to uh, trade market turns successfully, then you've got most of the battle won there, okay? If you are able to uh, pinpoint and, um, and uh, you know, see the opportunities of market turns, of when the market turns to the upside or to the downside, then you've got a lot of the battle won, okay? And then also uh, the struggle between the bulls and the bears, the, the, you know, the bulls being uh, those that, uh, those traders or those institutions that are looking for the price to go up and bears are looking for the price to go down, okay? So there's always a struggle between the bulls and the bears, and the candlesticks tell, that, tell the story of that struggle. So again, the primary principles, wicks and shadows, indecision, market turns, and the bull and the bear struggles, uh, struggle. Now again, it's all about the story, not about the names. So I'm going to be showing you a bunch of names right now. But uh, you know, just keep in mind, it's not about these names, and I don't really care what they're called. Rather, once you're able to pinpoint what these uh, uh, candlestick patterns are telling you, you're not going to have to worry about the names. You're, rather, you're going to have to worry about how they apply to trading opportunities in front of you. Okay, so let's talk about basic uh, candlestick patterns. Let me just, uh, okay, basic candlestick patterns. Um, let me turn to, okay, so I here I have the, uh, the UK uh, 100, which is the FTSE 100, um, because a lot of people say, why do, why do I keep showing the, um, the currencies? Uh, because a lot of you are, you know, are FTSE traders, and that's, that's a great thing. And I'm going to show you some uh, examples here of turns in the market and how they were preceded by uh, candlestick patterns. But let's first go through the candlestick patterns that I, I want to show you. A lot of you may have seen this slide before. Um, these are my favorite candlestick patterns. These are uh, by far my favorite. And two of these are by far my absolute favorite, okay? So uh, I'll talk about these in a second. But first of all, let's, let's go through them one by one. Uh, here we have what's called a doji. I can't speak Japanese. Um, I don't know what a doji means, but that's a doji, okay? So uh, here we have, uh, what is a doji? It is, uh, you know, we have a, a, a candlestick which looks like a bar because it's such a thin, uh, you know, open and close. But basically what it is is that uh, that uh, doji, that uh, candlestick, opened and closed, closed at the same price or very, very near the same price, okay? And then it went up, it went down, it went down, it went up, and then it closed uh, uh, near or at where it opened. What does that uh, talk about? That talks about indecision in the market. So just think about it. What is this story that this doji, or whatever you want to call it, uh, what, what kind of story is it telling you? It's telling you that, uh, you know, at this point, we had a lot of uh, struggle between the bulls and the bears, up and down, down and up, and in the end, we reached equilibrium, okay? So where it, uh, where it, uh, it closed, where, about where it opened, and what does that uh, signify? That signifies some indecision in the market, and therefore a possible, uh, a possible turn in the market, okay? Now, um, when I say turn in the market, uh, usually I mean like reversals in the market. Spinning top is very uh, similar to that, okay? But it's instead of opening and closing at uh, at a very uh, at you know very near or the same price, it's uh, opening and closing. It has a very small body, which means it's opening and closing near uh, the, uh, the. It's closing near where it opened, okay? So you could have a black, or a white, or a red, or a green, or what have you, spinning top, and it's simply signifies, but not to a, a, as much of an extent as, extent as a doji, indecision in the market. So we have a small body, we have, an, uh, you know, we have a, a long upper wick, a long lower wick, it just shows you that you know, there was a lot of up and down, up and down, but by the time it closed, it closed near where it opened, and therefore we have indecision in the market, spinning top. For me, the doji is a much stronger uh, signal than the spinning top. Okay. Now, uh, let's come to my two favorite of all of my, uh, all of the candlesticks that I, that I look at on a daily basis. My two favorite by far are the hammer and the shooting star, and I'll show you this on my chart in a second. The hammer is simply, after a move down in price, 
we have uh, this uh, last candle, which is the hammer candle, and that forms uh, a small body towards the top end of the candlestick, and then the wick moves all the way down. I mean, I'm sorry, the price moves all the way down, hits a low, and then comes all the way back to close near where it opened. Okay, so you could have a doji hammer or a hammer doji or wh whatever you want to call it. It really doesn't matter. But basically what that means is that uh, you had uh, you had an open and a close very close or at where, you know, where it opened. And then you had price in the meantime go all the way down to the bottom and co uh, come all the way back to the top. Okay, uh, and that is uh, that's a very strong signal of rejection or failure. Okay, so that's one of the primary principles as well: rejection or failure. We talked about. Let me just go back here. The wicks and the shadows being very important. Okay, the primary principle here: the wicks and the shadows. This this uh, embodies that perfectly. Okay, so you have a very long lower shadow or lower wick on the candlestick. What does that mean? That means that this price tried to continue this downtrend. It went all the way down, it hit a low, but then by the time that period closed, that uh, that candlestick closed, it closed near the high, and therefore it was rejected near the low, okay? Uh, it rejected near the, or rejected at or near the low, and it came all the way back, uh, it, re it was rejected, it failed, and it came back, and this is a possible turning point to the upside. So that's called a hammer. Now, uh, why is this important? Because this is the story it's telling you. It's telling you there is a downtrend or there's a move to the downside uh, and then it tried to continue but it failed. Okay, And therefore, it's a possibility for a move to the upside. Now, what I mentioned before, I said, you know, these candlesticks in and of themselves are not, uh, you know, incredibly important. But if it occurs in conjunction with your other tools, namely, in this, in this uh, instance, support, then it makes for a very high probability trade. So what do I mean by that? If this hammer, you'll see, you know, I'm, I'm going to show you on the footsie in a second, but hammers occur all over the place. And you'll, you'll see hammers, uh, you know, in the middle of nowhere. If it occurs in the middle of nowhere, I'm probably not going to pay much attention to it. But if it occurs near a support level, a key support level, or a key Fibonacci level, or a key... Uh, moving average or what have you, whatever represents support, then that for me is a very strong signal because you have a confluence. You have a confluence of, of uh, you know, at least two different factors telling you that perhaps there will be a turn here. So again, at the bottom or near the bottom of this hammer, if there was a very strong support level, then that for me is a very strong um, signal when it combined with the hammer that perhaps it will be turned to the upside. Same thing with the shooting star, but to the downside. So the shooting star is just the, just the same thing, but to the, you know, in the opposite fashion, we have an uptrend, we, ha we have a move up, and then we have this candle, the shooting star, trying to move further up, but it fails, and, uh, it fails in that regard, and it gets rejected and moves back to the downside. That means that momentum was, uh, was slowed down, okay? Uh, or maybe even uh, reversed. So uh, if this, you know, again, if this shooting star occurs in the middle of nowhere, I'm not going to be paying that much attention to it. However, if it occurs near a, a support or resistance level, I'm going to be paying a lot of attention to it because that's going to be giving me some type of an indication that perhaps there will be a turn to the downside. That confluence that I keep talking about, that agreement of the resistance and of the shooting star. The, the shooting star, the story it's telling me is rejection failure to the upside. And that's uh, resistance to the upside is telling me there's a ceiling there. If that ceiling is combined with the rejection failure to the upside, then perhaps there will be a turn to the downside. And then at that point, I'm going to have a higher probability trade than if I just had the support or resistance level or if I just had the hammer or shooting star. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Um, okay, so uh, Bob, what about a single horizontal line with no wicks at all? A single horizontal line with no wicks at all, uh, as this is just one open close trade uh, instantaneously. Yeah, you don't see. That's a great question because uh, you know sometimes you'll see that. Uh, I believe I saw it here. Uh, those are usually anomalies. Okay, so um, this is on. I mean, if if we're talking about the daily chart, this is usually an anomaly. Okay, so for example, here we see a, a we see a, a you know just a horizontal line. Okay, or here we see a horizontal line. I don't know what days of the week those are. Uh, they could be, um, you know, I'm not sure if I have uh, weekends open up here, but if they are, then they, they could be weekends or what have you. But, um, but essentially, you're not going to see that much. But 
on a very short-term time frame. I have the daily open now. On a very short-term time frame, uh, like, for example, a one-minute chart, sometimes in low volatility um, you know, times, you'll see these just horizontal lines without wicks, without shadows, meaning that uh, it just opened and closed and there wasn't much price movement uh, or what, there wasn't any price movement and it simply uh, you know, closed where it opened. Okay? So you'll see that oftentimes on very short-term time frames. But um, what do those mean? Yeah, I mean, I don't put a lot of stock in, in, in that. Uh, I'm not going to be trading off of those because those usually mean it's just a total lack of volatility or it's just a very, very short-term chart. Um, okay, gaps. Uh, gaps are in the in the uh, mien. Uh, mien. Uh, gaps. You say, what do gaps signify? Uh, they signify in in the world of candlesticks, they're called windows. Okay, and I don't have uh, I don't have that here. Uh, windows are are basically gaps, um, and uh, you know there there are different uh, candlestick patterns that do that that uh, use uh, these gaps. Uh, I'm not going to be discussing them here because I don't I don't usually use them that much. Um, you know, in terms of some, uh, because we have 24-hour markets now, uh, in, in a lot of things like the currencies, we're not looking at uh, gaps as much as, uh, as we used to uh, in terms of, uh, you know, if we're looking at stocks or shares or, or what have you. But um, there, are, uh, there are many candlestick patterns that take advantage of those gaps or windows, uh, but I, I don't have a lot of time to go through that uh, right now. Um, okay, Olalua, uh, do you have anything to comment uh, on the Heikinashi candlesticks? Okay, great question there. Uh, Heikinashi or Heikinashi, uh, they're a type of candlestick patterns. Um, I don't like them because they don't give the true price. They're giving average prices, uh, so I don't usually use Heikinashi. Uh, they, they give a very good smoothing of price, which is basically what moving averages do, but because they're they're averaging price rather than uh, rather than giving precise, uh, you know, the current precise price, uh, I don't like them because they can be deceiving, okay? It can be deceiving to trade on Heiken uh charts. And I believe, uh, you know, let me see. Oh, no, we don't have them here, but uh, we do have Heiken charts on our other charting platform. And, uh, you know, you could certainly uh, explore them. But, uh, you know, again, for me, uh, having averages is just not the same as having the true price there. Okay, um, before we get to other questions, let me uh, finish this real quick. So again, hammer and shooting star, hammers and shooting stars are extremely important uh, in, from my perspective, and they're, they're what I use most of the time. Now, uh, hanging men and inverted hammers are, are sort of the opposite of hammers and shooting stars. Um, you know, the, the shooting star equivalent uh, is the hanging men. As, and as you can see here, the hanging man and the shooting star you know, uh, they're, they're very similar. It's just that the, uh, the hanging man is, is sort of inverted from the shooting star, okay? Um, what story is that telling you? For me, you know, it's not telling me a great deal. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's giving, it, it is a reversal pattern. So the hanging man uh, would be, a, 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 you know, an indication of perhaps a move to the downside, a turn. But for me, hanging men are not a hanging man is not nearly as strong as a shooting star because a shooting star actually tells me a story of rejection, a story of failure, whereas a hanging man does not. Um, but nonetheless, it is a reversal pattern. Uh, inverted hammer is the op is is uh, you know the, very similar to a hammer. It's just that the uh, the actual candle is inverted, thus the name inverted hammer. I don't know why the hanging man is not called the inverted shooting star. Um, you know, I think that's a good question to ask, but. Um, but, uh, you know, in terms of the inverted hammer, it's just an inverted hammer. Uh, it's a hammer inverted. And uh, it is the same signal, uh, but for me, much less strong, much, uh, you know, much less effective than the hammer candle because uh, the inverted hammer doesn't tell me, you know, nearly as strong a, uh, a story as the hammer candle does, okay? So, but it is a, a reversal pattern uh, to the upside, a possible reversal pattern to the upside. And again, if this happens near support, then much better than if it doesn't, okay? And the hanging man, if it happens near resistance, much better as a reversal pattern than if it doesn't happen near resistance. Okay, so those are uh, some of my favorite ones. Now let's move on to some more candlestick patterns, and uh, these are also uh, a couple of my favorites, including the bullish engulfing and the bearish engulfing patterns. And what does this mean? Again, do you, do you, you, know, you want to call it an engulfing pattern? Feel free to do so. That's what it's called. You want to call it an encompassing pattern? You know, great. 
if you want to call it, uh, you know, if you want to call it uh, after your your own name, that's great too. What is the story it's telling you? This is the story right here. Okay, the story is in the bull bullish engulfing pattern. Uh, we have a small uh, body here, and then we have a large body, a large uh, white body. In this case, it's a bullish body. The large white body is completely encompassing or engulfing uh, the prior candle, which means that the bulls are winning out against the bears and a possibility for a turn back to the upside. Okay, so this is also a turn indication. Bearish engulfing, same thing, but in the opposite manner. We got a small, um, a small uh, body here. Okay, it could be a white body, it could be a black body. Most of the time, it would be a white body or a green body, and then we have a bearish engulfing pattern with this big uh, body. A uh, big bodied candle uh, that is bearish, okay, so it's completely engulfing or, or encompassing the prior candle, and therefore it's called a, a bearish engulfing pattern, and we're looking to the downside. We're looking for a reversal to the downside. Harami is sort of, uh, the Harami are sort of like um, opposites of the engulfing in that uh, we have the small body, uh, you know, after the big body, okay? Uh, and here it's talking about indecision in the market, and I'm going to show you a bunch of these in a second. Indecision in the market and potential turn in the market. Okay, so these are all turn, turning signals. These are all turning signals, okay, uh, which, you know, candlesticks really excel at providing turning signals. Now let's uh, talk about a few more. These are even more, yet more turning signals, okay. Uh, there are some uh, continuation patterns uh, that continue trends in, in um in candlesticks, but for the most part, the real strength in candlesticks are the uh, are the fact that they provide you with good turning signals, where the markets turn, and if used in conjunction with your other tools, they could be very powerful indications. So we take a look at the, uh, these additional uh, patterns here. We have tweezer bottoms, uh, and again, if if you um if you want these uh, these uh you know this PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I know I'm going through this pretty quickly, but if you want uh, this PowerPoint presentation, please feel free to uh, to email me at james.chen at cityindex.com. I'll be more, more than happy to send these to you. Uh, it just gives you my favorite and my most used uh, candlestick patterns. Uh, but I'm going to get to my charts in a second. Uh, here we have tweezer bottoms, okay, tweezer tops. And obviously, you know, these are called tweezers for, for very clear reasons. Uh, they look like tweezers. But uh, at the same time, what are they? They're basically double tops, double bottom, double tests, and you know, they could also be called failure, uh, failure because they're double testing and then moving back to the upside. Tweezer bottoms, tweezer tops. I'll show you some examples in a second. Uh, tweezer bottoms are uh, reversals to the upside. Tweezer tops uh, are reversals to the downside. Morning star. Okay, a lot of you may have heard of this. Morning and evening star. Uh, this is simply a little uh, doji, or it could be a. Um, it could be a, uh, a uh, what do you call it, a spinning, spinning top. Sometimes I get confused with these names as well. Uh, spinning top or a uh, doji pattern is simply, uh, you know, what do doji uh, signify? Indecision and a potential turn in the market, and this is exactly what the morning star is doing and the evening star is doing uh, up here, okay? These are all turning patterns. Uh, three, white, three white soldiers and three black crows, okay? Again, very imaginative names. I don't usually use these that, that much, but basically what it is is uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you see three um, bullish candles, okay, after, uh, you know, after a, a downtrend, then that is, you know, that's talking about a momentum to the upside to turn the, the trend back to the upside. Three black crows, if you see three um, bearish candles, after a uh, after an uptrend or an up move, then that is uh, potentially a momentum move to the downside, which is again a reversal pattern. Okay, now I don't know if you could see this on the bottom. Uh, this is uh, the piercing uh, candle, okay, and then the dark cloud cover. These are just opposites, and uh, I'm going to show you um, examples in a second. But basically, what this means is that uh, you see this red candle right here, okay, for the piercing candle. You see this red candle right here, and then you see a gap down. You see price gap down and then and then uh, give a, a relatively large uh, you know bullish body bullish candle there that moves into this uh, red candle that 's a, a potential turn okay to the upside dark cloud cover same thing but uh, but you know in the opposite fashion you see a, a bunch of green candles here and then you see a red candle that gaps up okay so that from the close of the prior bar of the prior candlestick you see a gap up to uh, open higher than uh, the close, okay, that's a gap, and then 
uh, and then move down, and then uh, uh, you know it closes well into the prior candle. That's called dark cloud cover. It talks about a possible reversal to the downside. Okay. Okay, so those are those are some of my favorite ones. I'm not going to go through the whole encyclopedia of uh, candlestick patterns because, quite frankly, I don't use the vast majority of them. Uh, I only use uh, I pretty much only use these that I'm showing you right now, and uh, for the most part, the ones that I use the most are the ones with the long wicks. If you want to call them hammers and shooting stars, uh, feel free to call them that. But what I'm looking for are these these things right here, these lines right here, these vertical lines that talk about rejection, that talk about failure. Also, I'm looking at these um, big candles that are engulfing or encompassing prior candles. Okay, That talks about the bears or the bulls winning over the bulls or the bears, uh, you know, whatever, case, whatever the case may be. Okay, And these other ones I, I, I also use, I'm going to point out, but for the most part, uh, you know, this is really you only really need a handful of uh, candlestick patterns to help with your, uh, you know, to to provide uh, uh, confirming confirming um, uh, signals for for your other with your other tools. Okay, so let's move forward real quick. Um, let me let me go to the charts. Uh, first of all, let me see uh, one more question that I see here that I didn't cover, or a couple more actually. Sonia, uh, would you recommend using candlesticks with reversal or continuation chart patterns? For example. Uh, wedges, triangles, and so on. Okay, Sonia, great question there. <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay, great question there, Sonia. The question again, would you recommend using candlesticks with reversal or continuation pattern uh, chart patterns? Uh, for example, wedges, triangles, and so on. Okay, I would, uh, I would, uh, you know, use them with both. Okay, with both. And it's very, it's a little bit difficult to explain why I would say both. But uh, as I've just mentioned before, the candlestick patterns excel at showing reversals. So you would think that I mean that I'm looking for um, I'm looking for a, a reversal pattern, uh, reversal patterns to to use them with. But that's not necessarily the case. And let me show you why. Okay, so right here, for example, here I have a, a you know I have this unconventional trend following hammer, and that's what I call it. Okay. So you could call it whatever you want, but this is an unconventional trend-following hammer. Now, you would think that this is looking at a reversal, okay? But essentially what it is, it's looking at a continuation of this uptrend. So, uh, so again, what, I, don't, I don't really want to call it a hammer more, you know, more I want to call it a rejection or a failed candle, or a failed candle, or a rejection candle, or, or whatever you want to call it. But basically, what it is is that, you know, we are in an uptrend at this point, okay? So we're in a new uptrend at this point. Now, uh, you see this, uh, this very nice candlestick pattern occur, okay? And this is a hammer candle, but it's not really a classic handle, uh, candlestick can hammer, candlestick hammer, can uh, I'm sorry, hammer candlestick pattern. What it is is that it's showing you that it went all the way down and came all the way back, got rejected from the lows, and, uh, and then it gaps up the next day, okay? It gaps up the next day after that. So uh, that, for me, is a very strong bullish signal. And, and indeed, it continues on for, for quite some time. But, but uh, you know, the story here is not that this is a hammer candle. Rather, it's that it has a long lower wick, and therefore, uh, you know, uh, it's a, it could be a pullback. So it pulled back, but this pullback failed, okay? And then it gapped up the next day, and therefore, that, that's a, a potentially very bullish signal. Okay, um, okay. Uh, and they call it change color. Uh, let me see here. This is uh, Ola Lua. Um, oh, Heikinashi, Yeah, they change color during uh, during trading. The Heikinashi, The Heikinashi, uh, uh So it is. It can be confusing and misleading. Very, very, uh, very correct. There, I agree with you. Um, RV. What time a frame? Uh, what time frame is best? Okay, that's a great question, RV, as well. Uh, what time frame? So I'm show I'm going to be showing you I'm, I'm going to be showing you right now on the FTSE uh, daily chart. You know, for most technical signals, they tend to work better on longer term time frames as opposed to shorter term time frames. So you know, that's not to say that I won't be using these on on the five minute chart, but uh, I'm going to put more uh, you know more importance on uh, candlesticks that occur. During uh, you know on on a larger time frame, okay, absolutely they work on short time frames. 
you know, I would say on a one minute time frame or less, they're less, much less effective. But on longer time frames, the longer you get, I think, and from my experience, the more effective you get, but they can always be very, very useful. So on a very short term time frame, very, very useful. But as you get, uh, you know, to the larger time frames, even more so, even more useful. If you're on the extremely short term time frames, uh, very, very much less effective than, than on longer time frames. Okay, and I'm talking about one minute or less. Uh, Mian uh, has a gap. I wonder why gap occurs. Uh, gaps occur, uh, you know, that's a, that's a good question. Um, gap, why do gaps occur? Well, gaps occur, can occur for many different reasons. One could be, uh, you know, simply between the, open, the close and the open, open um, of the next day. You have uh, traders trading in between that, uh, and then you're going to have a gap. So uh, oftentimes we'll see a, a gap on open which means that, uh, you know, the opening of the new day, uh, you have a, a re you know, you already have a lot of traders in position and therefore, you know, you're going to see us uh, skipping prices. Uh, it could also be th uh, because of fast moving markets, very volatile markets that uh, you just don't have any bids, uh, you know, at a certain, uh, at a certain level. Okay. And then uh, let's say, uh, you know, it's, it, let's say, uh, you know, there's a, an event or a, a, news, a news announcement or what have you that makes the uh, markets move in a very, um, you know, in a very uh, strong manner uh, to the upside. So what you'll often have is that uh, you'll have people bidding, bidding it up at a higher price than what the current price is, and much higher price, and therefore, uh, you know, you're going to see that, that type of a gap. So there are many reasons for a gap, mostly it's through uh, fast-moving markets or between the close and the open. But, uh, you know, uh, essentially that's why we see gaps. Now, uh, you know, if, if you talk about the currency markets, there's a relative lack of gaps. Uh, there's still gaps, but there's a relative lack of gaps only because it's a 24-hour market, first of all. So uh, you don't have, you know, much of the, uh, a close and an open. Uh, you're going to have it, uh, you know, between the weekend and the, the open of the next week. But generally speaking, it's a 24-hour market, so you're not going to have that many gaps. Um, also, uh, because the, uh, ex uh, the foreign exchange markets, the currency markets are so liquid, that means so many people are trading them for many different reasons, not just speculators, but people actually trading the currencies, then uh, because it's so liquid, uh, most of the time you're not going to see much uh, in terms of the gaps. Uh, only, only on very, very fast-moving markets on the currencies will you see gaps. Um, that being said, on thinly traded stocks, and thinly traded uh, instruments, um, you know, trading instruments, you, you will oftentimes see gaps because they're thinly traded. Their liquidity is very low. Uh, also, you see the, uh, the, you know, the gaps between the close and the open. So, you know, good question there. Okay, um, let's see here. Duresh, lar larger time, uh, time frame, uh, less frequent. Larger time frame, less frequent, but more effective. Uh, shorter time frame, more frequent, but less effective. You you pretty much you pretty much uh, framed it perfectly, Duresh. Uh, on a larger time frame, you're going to see less frequent, um, less frequent uh, candlestick patterns, just like less frequent opportunities. Okay. Uh, on a short a shorter time frame, you're going to see more frequent um, candlestick patterns and other uh, signals, but they're going to be less effective. Yes, absolutely, I agree. Great. Okay. Um, okay. So let's move forward real quick, and then uh, you know we'll show you a little bit here. Now, uh, you know, just to show you, let's, let's go to the let's go to the beginning here. Um, okay. Well, let's go back here. Let's go back here. Uh, here, um, I just went back a little bit in time and just showed you uh, turns in the markets uh, where you know you could you could uh, use the candlestick patterns in conjunction. With, uh, with your other tools. So here is just in the middle of nowhere, uh, just to show you a bearish engulfing pattern. Uh, and just because it, it, it occurs in the middle of nowhere, you know, at least I think this is the middle of nowhere. This is the FTSE 100 daily chart. Let me see. This is around the 65, you know, 35 level or so. And we see this big uh, bearish engulfing pattern, which ultimately does turn into some downside there. But, uh, you know, just to show you the actual pattern, it's right here. Uh, that's what a, a bearish engulfing pattern looks like, and it's showing you that the the uh, bears, after this uh, run up to the upside, we're seeing the bears winning against uh, out against the bulls, 
and uh, therefore, uh, you know, you're we're looking for some type of continuation of that move. Uh, something fundamental happened to, to make that occur, and therefore, we're looking for um, uh, a move to the downside. Now, uh, again, the fact that this happened in the middle of nowhere, at least I think uh, it happened in the middle of nowhere, you know, uh, makes it a, a less of a uh, less of a nice, uh, you know, a nice uh, signal. Uh, here we have a long wick that proceeded a, a, a turn back to the upside. Okay, again, this happened in the middle of nowhere. But, okay, so let's move forward a little. I'm going to show you where they happened in the middle of somewhere. Okay, so here, uh, here was uh, key resistance. Uh, this is around the 68.75, 68.80 level or so, okay? So when price was moving up really nice. This is a very clear shooting star here. Uh, this is, and, you know, again, you could block out this text right here, but what is it showing you? It's showing you it moved up, okay, it neared resistance, and then it came back to the downside, and then uh, it got rejected, and from there it moved uh, lower uh, from there. Now, from a strategic uh, viewpoint, would you take this trade? Yeah, you could take this trade. Why would you take this trade? Just because there's a shooting star there? No, uh, because there's a very nice shooting star there, first of all, but second of all, uh, we also have um, a, a you know, a uh, resistance level up here. And then also, I, have, I don't have it shown here, but uh, we also had a, uh, a MACD cross down or a, um, a stochastics cross down. Okay, so that's all part of my confluence. That put together makes it for a good, for a good trade. And so I put in this trade. I've got my uh, risk management to take care, take care of me. I got a short trade. I got my risk management to take care of me. Now, uh, if, it go, if it goes uh, back to the upside and takes me out, okay, I'm out of the trade. Okay, I've got a, uh, I've got, um, uh, lim I've limited my risk, and I've, I'm out of the trade. But if it, uh, if it turns into the reversal pattern that I'm looking for, then that's a great thing, and I could ride this as far as it goes, and I could use, uh, you know, trailing stop losses. I could put in multiple uh, trades and then take them off at different profit levels or what have you. But basically, what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for a high probability trade, and one part of that is. The, the shooting star candle. One part of that is resistance. Another part of that may be a moving average. Another part of that may be, uh, you know, the fundamentals. Another part may be uh, my stochastics right here, okay, which I don't have right here, but, you know, it could be that. Um, okay, here, what I just showed you, the unconventional trend following hammer, okay, so uh, usually with uh, candlesticks, you're looking for the reversal pattern, like, uh, you know, the bearish engulfing reversal pattern. The uh, long wick, it's a reversal pattern. The shooting star, reversal pattern. Here, not so much a reversal pattern. Yeah, you could call it a reversal pattern from, you know, th this is a, a red candlestick here and then it goes down and then it closes back up here. So it's reversing this move down. But essentially what it is on a bigger picture is it is a continuation pattern to the upside. Okay? So this is a clear continuation pattern. Okay, let's move forward real quick. Okay, lots of questions here. Okay, I'll try to get through these as soon as possible, uh, but let me just move forward real quick. Uh, lots of questions here. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, here, uh, what do we have here? Now, we have, uh, this is called a spinning top, okay, and then uh, it's also a harami, which means it is uh, encompassed uh, within the prior candle, okay? And it's also almost a, sh a morning star candle, okay? So it's giving you, and if it occurs near support, which it didn't quite uh, right here, you know, uh, I'm not sure what level this is, but uh, around the uh, 62, 82 level, I'm not sure back then, but, uh, you know, this is uh, almost just a morning star candle. So it's got all this going for it, plus if it had other... Um, uh, factors, including the support, including my different, uh, my different, other different um, uh, signals and indicators, then uh, that for me would be a bullish uh, signal. Here I have a tweezer tops. What is a tweezer tops? It's simply a, uh, it's a, a double test, okay, or a double top. It's not, a, you know, it's not a, uh, it's not a conventional double top or double bottom as you would see right here. This is a conventional double bottom right here. Okay, this is not conventional because it happens right after each other, but basically what it is, it's a double top, okay? Uh, a tweezer tops, it's a double test of that level, 
whatever this level may be, it's around resistance, and uh, if that occurs, this is also a failure to move, to continue move moving to the upside and a potential reversal to the downside, and it turns into a reversal. If you got into a trade on the tweezer tops, if this was resistance, if you had other signals uh, going uh, you know short for you, then you could get into this trade and you have very tight risk management right there if the trade goes against you. Okay, so it's all about that. It's all about finding the high probability opportunities, taking those high probability opportunities, and then having your risk management in place in case those high probability opportunities turn into not so high probability uh, opportunities where they go against you. Okay, but in this case, this was a clear tweezer tops. If it occurred near resistance, uh, this would have been a very high probability, a very high reward to risk ratio potential trade that you could um, move your stop loss, okay, and lock in profits there. Okay, now this double bottom I was talking about right here, the double bottom. The reason I didn't say much here, okay, right up here, is because there's not much there in terms of the candlestick. Yeah, there's a relatively long candlestick here, but not really. And there's a, you know, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not really saying that much. What we could, well, actually, no, you can't. There's not really much going on here, okay, in terms of the candlesticks. Um, but uh, so you know you can't look for things that are not there. But uh, for example, here we have a double bottom, a very clear double bottom. So we see this double bottom occur, okay, and then we see a clear, uh, a pretty clear hammer hammer type candle, okay. Some of you purists might say that's not a hammer candle. Well, I would say it is. And and anyway, I don't care if it's called a hammer or not. What I care about is this right right here, okay. This long wick to the downside and this little body to the upside. The fact that uh, this little body is not is not you know tiny or that it's not at the very top doesn't make a huge uh, amount of difference to me. What I'm looking for is a little body and then a big uh, you know a big uh, wick to the to the downside, big shadow to the downside, and around uh, the strong support area that we see here, around 64.50 on um, on uh, FTSE. Okay, so that's a double bottom. And again, I don't have my other indicators on this particular chart, but uh, the other indicators, I believe, at that point, were, were turning to the upside, uh, especially the stochast stochastics that I like to use. And uh, coupled with the hammer, hammer candle, that's a pretty good uh, opportunity, okay? Pretty good opportunity to go long. Now, here, we have very strong uh, resistance again. Once again, it's 68.75 to 68.80 level, okay? Here, we have a bearish engulfing pattern. Okay, first of all, we have a uh, spinning top right here, and then we have a bearish uh, engulfing pattern right here. It ran a little bit. It didn't go so far, but that's a, top, that's a, you know, a reversal pattern, uh, and then uh, coupled with my other, um, my other uh, uh, tools, uh, that could be a good uh, potential uh, possibility to go short. Now, here is almost an evening star, not really, but uh, you know, here is, it's showing you some, uh, some indication, but most importantly, it's right around resistance. Okay, now um, right down here, okay, this sort of happened in the middle of nowhere, but this is what's called a piercing pattern. Why is that? We have this long, uh, we have this big red candle, which is a bearish candle, and then we have a gap down where it started the next day lower, okay, gap down, and then went all the way back up near the, uh, near, or it should actually be more than the middle of the prior bar. That's called a piercing pattern, a pretty strong reversal pattern, but the fact that it, it occurs, you know, almost uh, nowhere, uh, that for me is not such a strong trade. Although, if it, in hindsight, if you took the trade, it would have been good. But, uh, you know, not such a strong trade if it's not around a strong support area. Here's a, uh, here's a spinning top and a hanging man in succession. So here we have a spinning top. It's also a, uh, an engulfing pattern. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, a harami pattern. That's a spinning top. Talks about indecision. But most importantly, this, this occurs at resistance. Okay. Then we have a hanging man candle. Okay, and then this happens at resistance. Okay, so very strong there uh, because of these candlesticks, yes, but also more importantly because of this resistance level. Here we have a, uh, what you might, uh, you know, you might have issue about calling a hammer candle because it's got such a big body. But what am I looking here at here? I'm looking at the very big, um, very big, very long wick here, a long shadow here, and it happens right near support. Okay. Um, let's take a look here. Here's another hammer candle right here, right around this support level. Okay, another hammer candle, and then a move to the upside. Um, here is a Harami and shooting star. 
uh, right around uh, support, okay? And then here is the double bottom support. This is almost a piercing pattern. Why do I say almost? Well, what happened was we had a big red candle here. It gapped down to open the next candle, but it did not go far enough into this. And, you know, that's the definition of a piercing paddle, pa pattern. It should go far, than, far enough or at least halfway into this uh, prior candle before being called a piercing pattern. But this is almost a piercing pattern. And, it, and more importantly, it happens right near very strong support. Uh, right around the 66.75 level, and that is also a double bottom, okay? And around the 7,000 level, the 7,000, which is key psychological level on the FTSE, okay, we see a, a, a number of different uh, patterns here, including a doji, a hanging man, um, uh, and then, a, let me see, a shooting star right here, okay? So that is, uh, for me, if you have a succession of these types of reversal candlesticks, then you're going to see a possible, uh, you know, a possible turn from there. Okay. Okay. So that's uh, that's pretty much it. I've run out of time here. Lots of questions here. Uh, again, uh, if you have any questions that I wasn't able to go through, uh, you know, uh, please feel free to email me at james.chenatcityindex.com, and I will be more than happy to answer your questions. Also, if you want these, uh, you know, I know I went through a lot of material today. If you want these. Uh, these slides, please feel free to email me at james.chen at cityindex.com, and uh, hopefully we'll see you uh, very soon for the um, uh, election special, the UK election special, as well as in two weeks from now, we'll be talking all about Fibonacci's uh, in much the same manner as I talked today about candlesticks. And um, yeah, so uh, see you next time, and thank you very much, all of you, for your time today. Thank you very much.